Eric Ivara. He is the director of Residual Value Consulting for Kelly Blue Book. How are you, Eric? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for having me on your show. No, thank you. A uh, very interesting study every year. I, I believe the 13th year that Kelly Blue Book is doing this, right? I believe so. I wasn't here at the beginning. <laughs> okay. So anyway, so uh, can you please give an overall uh, idea of what, what is this, uh, this study by Kelly Blue Book, please? Yes. Um, Kelly Blue Book does um, what the industry calls residual values, and uh, this is just an industry term for a forecast of what future used car values are going to be. Uh, this is important for anybody that is in the leasing business because the residual value determines what the monthly payment is on a lease. Oh, okay. And And based on our residual value forecast, we do these awards every year that honor the vehicles that hold their value the best. Okay. So interesting results by Brand, Subaru, and uh, Lexus. Lexus, I guess, is not a surprise. They always rate very well in not only Calibre Book studies, but uh, every industry study. I mean, like... For years, they've been number one in many different categories, right? Yes, and um, we see that in the numbers that we calculate. Uh, they've been pretty dominant in the luxury segment. And uh, even though, I mean, the competition is coming up close in uh, from everywhere. I mean, uh, from uh, Europe, from uh, Asia, with Korea, with Hyundai and Kia, and uh, here from the United States. But that luxury segment seems to be pretty well in hands of uh, Lexus, huh? That's right. Lexus is at the top, and uh, some of the other German makes and uh, some of the Japanese makes are all trying to catch Lexus. Uh, but so far, Lexus has been very successful in holding its lead. So can you tell us a little bit about why is it that in this particular study, Lexus is number one in the luxury uh, segment? Yes, I think it's uh, just that they've built such a strong brand that uh, people want to own a used Lexus if they can't buy one new. And uh, Lexus and Toyota continue to develop uh, vehicles that consumers want to own. They've been very good about not overproducing, so they don't have a lot of uh, very high uh, incentives, and they're careful not to produce too many vehicles, which has the effect of lowering the used car value. So along with the quality, the obvious quality that these cars have and like the new designs and all that, perception is a big issue here too. Um, quality plays a factor in uh, resale value, um, but it is not one of the most important factors. Um, we've found that some vehicles that don't have particularly high um, reliability or durability uh, end up having high resale value. And the reason for that is because Uh, the volume of these vehicles are lower okay. so that the, the supply and demand equation comes out in favor of the uh, vehicle. So meaning that a particular car, even though it might not be the best in its category or whatever, I mean, may have some value because it's, it's a rare car. That's right. Um, basically, if um, in order for a vehicle with mediocre quality to end up at the top of our list, it has to be pretty unusual. Um, so, you know, if it's just a uh, run-of-the-mill mid-sized sedan yeah. and, and it looks like everything else, chances are it's not going to be at the top of the list. Yeah, okay. But I'm um, not that Subaru has any of those qualities that we just talked about. I mean, they're like really making really, really good cars in the past uh, few years. So they're number one in their regular, like non-luxury brand uh, category, right? That's right. We found that uh, the Subaru brand does a, an extremely good job of managing their, uh, their quantity. And uh, what um, has happened is that the demand for Subarus uh, really outstrips their ability to produce these cars. And the result is, is that Subaru doesn't have to spend a lot of incentives to sell the vehicles. And that really helps resale value. 
Yeah, so in the, in the, you have 22 categories in this study, and uh, Subaru has the compact car with the Impreza, the midsize with the Legacy, and uh, let me go through the list. I mean, like, they have different, in different categories, different models. So, I mean, overall, the whole lineup, they, ha they offer something really good in almost every different category, right? Yes, they don't have as full a lineup as maybe Toyota or Chevrolet would have, um, but they offer vehicles in the high volume categories, like you said, compact car, midsize car, uh, compact utility, midsize utility. Um, their uh, WRX won in our sporty compact car segment as well. Yeah, that's a fantastic car. I had a chance to drive it, and I have to agree with you. It's a fantastic car. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that one, actually, I think it also holds the value because there are not that many of those, so people are going to want them down the road. Uh, so let's, uh, let's talk a little bit more about other cars. I mean, you mentioned uh, General Motors, uh, Chevrolet. I mean, they're doing really, really great uh, lately with all the models, especially midsize uh, crossover SUVs and pickup trucks too, right? That's right. Um, Chevrolet ended up in the second spot on our list this year, and it's primarily because their trucks are doing so well. Uh, they redesigned their Silverado last year, and they came out with the Colorado this year, and uh, so far both trucks seem to be doing quite well. Yeah. So um, I, I see that you have, uh, as we said, like regular brand, like non-luxury brand, luxury brand, then like 22 different categories, but then you have a top 10 list. And I'm a little bit confused here because I see, for example, in the midsize uh, truck, pickup truck, you have the Toyota Tacoma in the categories, but then on the top 10 list, you have the Silverado and the Colorado and the F-150. So can you explain the criteria uh, behind this? Yes, um, so the, our top 10 list um, are the 10 vehicles with the highest average residual value. Okay. And this year, they happen to all be trucks or sport utility vehicles. And this is a trend that we've seen in the industry. The trucks and the uh, utility vehicles are holding their value much better than cars. And uh, we think it's because the, uh, the public has shifted in their case. And uh, rather than owning a car, more and more people want to get into a truck or a sport utility. This trend started even before gas prices came down. Yeah. So it's been going on for uh, uh, probably about a year or two. Yeah. This. Uh, and, yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, as a result, um, the values on the trucks and utility vehicles are holding up very well um, relative to the cars, and the cars are just um, not holding up as well as the trucks. Yeah, and I have to say, like the new trucks, I mean, they're like almost luxury vehicles, some of them. I mean, you, you get into into the cabin of some of these things, and they're like first-class uh, private jet cabins. I mean, they have all the technology, all the luxury, and then they have all the utility in the back. Yes, um, you're absolutely right. When you get into some of these high-end trucks, um, you would think you're in a Lexus or a Mercedes Benz. The leather is very nice. You know, they have great audio equipment, and the room in a full-size truck, you know, is just impossible to match. You don't, you cannot find a car that has as much room as a full-size truck. Yeah. And some of the interesting categories for the high-performance car, for example, the Corvette, which, I mean, they, what a hit with that car GM had, huh? Yes, um, the Corvette has been a home run for General Motors. Um, not only does the vehicle look great, but it performs extremely well. Um, I think the, uh, the, the, the trick that GM pulled off is they made the car very fast, but they also made it perform well, which means that it, uh, um, it, uh, it stays on the road even at uh, high speeds. 
Um, the performance on that vehicle is just phenomenal. And um, they've recently come out with an even faster version called the V06. Um, the, the amount of performance that you get for that price is just um, outstanding. Yeah, 650 horsepower and uh, for less than $100,000, I mean, if you're going to buy a European car with those kind of uh, numbers, I mean, you have to go two, three times that price. So it's very, very impressive. We're talking with Eric yeah. Ivar. Ivara, Director of Residual Value Consulting from Kelly Blue Book about the 2015 Best Result Value Award winners. So, Eric, thank you very much for your time. We're running out of uh, time here in this segment. So, kellybluebook.com for more information about this and other uh, valuable information for new and used cars, right? Thank you, Javier. Thank you for having me on your show. Thank you very much. Bye. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.